Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Rack, and today I'm doing a video on the evolution of the thing. Now, let me make myself bigger. Okay, so here we go. So here, this is kind of the trademark thing, right? This is kind of the look that he developed in the 70s. It was an extrapolation of what Jack Kirby did, but at some point when Jack Kirby left, the key artist on the Fantastic Four was anchor Joe Sinnott. He was the guy who did issue five, a little bit of issue six, and then he joined around issue 44. And he would stay on the book pretty much from that point on, missing only a couple issues and staying until right before Byrne took over, where Byrne would ink it himself. Not because of wanting to, but um, just said it wasn't available. But um, ultimately, when we were first introduced to the thing, he looked like this, right? This is the original look. So. And I think they said when Jack Kirby was on a panel, and they asked him, you know, obviously it looked like the current one looks like it's like rocks. He said, what was, what were you going for with this one? And he said, he's going for a dinosaur hide. They gave you kind of a hint of what you're looking for. And when you hear, you look at um, the what if that Jack Kirby wrote, what if the Marvel bullpen were the Fantastic Four? And Kirby described, had people describing the thing, which was the Rocky form, he called it scales. So this, we've always inter interpreted it as rocks. You can see from what he was going here early on, it was kind of scale. So I'm gonna go through the whole sort of look with these images at the same time, but hold on. I'm just going to pause a second. So he would, the thing would appear in trench coat and it would be kind of a big reveal because Ben Grimm, so at this point, this is issue two where this pinup was in, give me a full view of what the thing looked like. He's the strongest man-like creature on the face of the earth. So there's no Hulk. They hadn't decided on the thing was it. And you can see if he got a pinup in issue two, they realized he was popular, but Martin Goodman was kind of more for the for the human torch. So you can hear Martin Goodman kind of um Torch got his own series and strange tales. Um and he also when he would mention doing other things like the X-Men, he'd say a group of torches. So um, but we have the thing showing you how strong it is. He has a light post that is crushing, and there's even stuff protruding from him. One foot has four toes, the other has three, right? So oh, I need to turn this audio down because we don't need that. I'm just going to quickly scan through this, and um, he'd be pretty gruesome, even though he was a hero. And this would be the classic Kirby version. Now this version, we'll see as we go along, he could um, go from uh, tragedy to horror to humor, all in this thing. And this version of the thing, he would have some arm muscles, you can see the muscles for his, um, you know, some muscles there, but Ultimately, he's kind of a slab, right? No chest muscles. He does, at this point around, this is issue 51, he does have the, the unibrow, so it's a little more pronounced. We'll see how that developed as it went along, but this is kind of the classic thing. And you'll see as we go through, sometimes people have gone back to this image as it, and obviously they realize that he should have four toes and four fingers and that sort of thing but i think um when burn talked about it things evolution kind of came 
kind of trying to keep him a monster, but slowly over time, he became easier to draw this way, right? So, but this would be a classic issue where the thing would kind of, um, with freedom. And here, as I showed you before, this is kind of the trademark from the 70s. Herbie's gone, but, the, the, you know, he kind of developed this sort of, I call him the handsome sort of thing. Whereas you saw the Kirby one, kind of it was kind of um, kind of rough. This one's kind of smoothed out, and then we have what Byrne got to. Now he didn't get to this thing um, just in one fell swoop. We'll see that as we go along. But this is kind of where he ended up, where we have some elements of the earlier thing, where he doesn't have any sort of regular shape kind of a monster type of look, but he has the classic rocky plates or rocks as people like to call them. They are not level, it's very rough, and here's a grim sort of shot of him. You know, that can hold tragedy and this, that, and the other in the character. So that's what Byrne kind of got to when he was doing the book. That's the character he got to. And then at some point post Byrne, because there was a hint I think at the end of um, Byrne, when they were getting to 300, they were going to do a story where possibly Byrne was going to try to figure out a different form for the thing. And he kind of bailed on the idea, but I think he, he might have told Steve Englehart about it. So Steve Englehart, I think this is around 319 or 318 where Ben turns and he gets more cosmic rays, he gets stronger, he kind of an armadillo thing. Now everything posts this part, you know, DeFalco doing the, the virus X where he turned into a more monstrous, a more monstrous version of that, you know, Wolverine cutting the thing's face so he looks gruesome. That, we're not going to really deal with that. We're just going to deal with the slow evolution of the thing as we went along. But I wanted to throw in Keith Polar because he's a classic um, thing artist. And this was safe for a while. So obviously we're going back to issue two. And this is what they came came up with. So we got to see how, you see how I don't really have any muscles. And we see the profile. And Byrne would kind of use this profile in his version as you go on. But you see, soon after... He's in between a rocky stage, but still the dinosaur hide. But you see what people would call in the Burns version a mushroom head. You can kind of see that was there. So when Burn was kind of got to his version of the thing, um, he kind of utilized this sort of profile, right? So I just wanted to keep that. That's a good thing. So you can see the thing's face from the profile keeping the grim portion of it you know and you see it here from here you don't really see any kind of muscle tone here you just see him you know with the three feet and once again the kind of mushroom head that you saw burn doing so when he was kind of picking out his version of the thing kind of picked it from this earlier thing that um jack kirby was doing so you can see there's no kind of unibrow here it's kind of, um, it's, it's what people regretfully call, it's just eyebrows, but at the same time, he kind of, people turned it into calling it a mushroom head as an insult to saying burn was way off, right? But you can see, I showed you the burn version and you see it here. So this is early on, this is around, this is in the first year or so. This is the fighting Ramatut and you can see that sort of thing. And here, I'm gonna stop here for a second even though the face was kind of it was a little different, you can see there's, there's not really any kind of muscle tone here. You do have, it's a different kind of rocky plates. But you see the kind of what people would call the mushroom head thing. And, um, and he kind of gets a little more uniform. And, and this is a cool issue. If you, I, I got a reprint of this and it was just amazing. This is Steve Ditko inking the thing, and it keeps the monster type look, the mushroom head. And I think this is kind of the, even though you can't really see it, this is the kind of inking, you see that issue that Byrne was kind of going for. 
So you can see his style. That's sort of not necessarily like Terry Austin. It's kind of more like I always call it bad burn. Um, excuse me. Um, burn Windsor Smith type of inking. That feels like it was Kirby inked by by um, Steve Ditko with a little bit of Neil Adams, but it's more cartoony and Burns type of version, right? But this is where I feel that Burns is going through. And you can see that kind of look that we have. We see, you know, um, with the different anchors, it's sort of the chain of the Dick Ayers here, kind of, um, you know, still keeping that. It doesn't have the unibrow yet. So this is like almost like um, 20 issues in. And he got he doesn't look as gruesome, but at the same time he still looks like kind of a monster. And here's a good one here. We can see the kind of um with a, with another profile look of the thing, right? This is like what? Oh, this is in the twenties, I think. Right? But this is a, he became more rocky, right? But you see here this is a little more like a starfish, no real shape or no real muscles. This is Kind of the look that burn here, another one you can see there's no real muscles and no real shape to him, just kind of a monster. But it's a little more, I'm not sure if you say it's the anchor, but the anchor is bringing out that these are, you know, kind of like rocks instead of a dinosaur hide. So you see it's slowly shifting as ink. I think it's like um, George Russo that's inking, and I think I don't, I don't have it in the right order right now, but you can see this goes back to a little more softer rocks but then you see here another shot where it's kind of you know, no real muscle tone kind of more like you know rocks instead of dinosaur hide and here you go so right here right now i think this is um george russo you can see it looking exactly more like rocks kind of has regular eyebrows a little more pronounced but no real unibrow yet right but it's all more like rocks instead of like a Soft thing. And then here we got another thing where you can kind of see the muscles kind of coming in, but it's not really there. Right? You can see maybe it's a little pushed in here, but it's kind of a, still a slab, right? So that's kind of what you have to remember that the thing started out of. That's why I want to show you Joe Sinnott's version without Kirby. And then you see how Kirby started, even as he gets becoming more rocky plates, it's still. More or less a slab. And this is, I think, to, to reference Burn again. You'll be referencing him since he kind of distilled everything that was in the FF into, into his work, right? So his thing was at some point when he was going to do the Hulk, the Hulk would be more like, you know, you could tell the difference between the Hulk and the thing, right? So the thing would, you know, kind of look, have this sort of look. I never realized. <clears throat> There's a cord around the thing's hand because they're fighting within rubble. And the Hulk would be a little bit taller, where it's, I think it's only a foot taller, but it looks here as the Hulk's bending over. So, I mean, it's extreme for the comic book, but keeping that idea that he's kind of a slab, no real muscles, and kind of throwing out kind of common uh, kind of musculature. This is Chick Stone. I didn't really get too much into Chick Stone, but this is right before he kind of got the unibrow. You can see it start to come in when Chick Stone was doing it. And Chick Stone is a classic style with him and Kirby. It's around the 30s where they're together and they're together for at least over a year. The Diablo story, a bunch of classic stories, the X-Men fighting them. They did a bunch of them, but I'm not going to get into that because I kind of show you how because it was so distinct. But here's, this is the issue where um, and still George Russo, so you still have kind of the mushroom head. You can, you're going to see a shot that Byrne does. It's like this, where there's no real shape here. Still more like a starfish, right? And uh, let's move this over. And to get into it, we'll go back a little. Get into the characterization. At this point here, Reed has a cure for him that's going to cure him per permanently. And they wonder why he's so stubborn. And he's like, nope. Alicia loves me like this way. And so what's going to be like if I become plain old Ben Grimm? So whenever people say, no, it wasn't that, here's Ben saying it directly to him, turning down a, a cure, right? And so here, the FF goes through like a transition period. Hold on, don't run away. In this transition, 
um, this Coletta starts inking the FF. And it's not the best combination, but at the same time, he also does the wedding. It is a monstrous thing, which I think it gets lost when people kind of do the thing that they don't keep him, that he still looks like a monster, right? And he has some elements of humor. And we'll see that as we go along. But at the same time, you could have this guy who, in one look, he can look humorous, one look he can look tragic, and one look he can look like a monster, right? So let's keep going. Right in this issue, he's been taken on mind control by the, um, the, the frightful four. And then at some point he's freed, but, he, but at the same time, he's been turned back into the thing. And I think this is where he attacks Dr. Doom and puts him in the hospital. So and this is, you can see the grim portion that he has to be the thing again, which is like, you know, a plot device, but what else is he do? That's the other thing. I think um, Al Milgram brought it up saying that a lot of people want thing to be cured, but that supposedly the fans just really should be relating that they don't want the thing to go through this. It would become boring if Ben could turn back and forth to from that. And that's, you know, why every writer stayed away from it. That's why Stan Lee and Jack Kirby never cured him. That's why he's only cured for short periods when it was all the classic artist writers and Roy Thomas, um, Ling Wen, um, Jerry Conway, um, Roy Thomas again, and Marv Wolfman. Uh, and even Doug Mensch, they didn't um, cure him at all either. So but it's not a thing where, hey, you know, we, cause we as, oh, so here, we have Joe Sinner here and you can see the unibrow is pretty clear now, right? You can see when Chick Stone was doing it, now you can kind of see the unibrow where the signs could look like a hat that people call and that's what you got to watch out for which i think early on it wasn't like a hat but it, sometimes it could be right so what you can see it's still kind of a monster there's some sadness to him and there's some humor that you have here this is them fighting galactus right and um, we have that I showed you before, this tragedy that you get in there. You have the unibrow, but he's still a monster, still kind of a slab. And then you get, as I said, you can also get some humor out of him. He's on the phone, this fancy phone, and you have the profile, which he hasn't lost, right? But you have, and you have this grim moment in the other side of all this humor, right? And I think... This is kind of right here, if you can see my pointer. This kind of looked at um, John Romita, <clears throat> RIP John Romita, did when he was on the book for like three issues. So let's keep going, right? I don't think I have too much more of this. Period. So yeah, I also want to show you that he could, Ben is being controlled by a mystery villain, and you can see he's turned back into a monster, right? And this is with the same face, but at the same time, you know, it invokes so much different things, right? So that's the thing you have to remember. But right here, we have um, John Basima, right? And this is a big moment in the thing, right? And this would be the catalyst for a lot of stuff that Byrne did, right? So then they retell the, the Fantastic Four's origin. And Roy Thomas with John Basima. They do an image where they show you what the thing looked like beforehand, right? So they show you, this is what he first looked like. And in his image thing, he just kind of presents the thing, how he looks today. But they show you that he evolved from this look to this look. So it wasn't just artist rendition or anchor. This was a process over a hundred issues whatever the time, the seven year period, um, that he evolved into this, right? So when you look at the thing early on, that was his early look and he slowly involved, evolved in something that's a little more handsomer, which I think Byrne did in um, Thing versus Thing, right? But I don't think, I don't know if I'm gonna re represent that here because 
I don't think that they kind of evoked like here it kind of evokes what Kirby was doing and Burns version is kind of early on so it's kind of really soft but we'll see how when Burn takes it on later how clean it kind of looks right so let's keep going right because this was just a retelling of the origin and here's another classic kind of um thing ish issue by um john basima there's also the hulk one where he fights the hulk which is another classic one that he does now john basima is one kind of moved more towards humor but at the same time it did have some you know could get rough and tumble type of deal but this one a classic one and here's a big thing right so after all this time you haven't really seen any muscles like regular muscles and we have a gil kane shot and we see the thing having chest muscles you know we can see the shoulder muscles and all the arm muscles this is a classic image but even if it's wrong it's classic and the effects were felt throughout with the thing and they kind of from this image because this is on some of the reprints the thing starts to get muscles right now Gil Kane was a regular artist on the Fantastic Four I don't think he even I think he did a couple covers but we have Rick Rick Buckler who is the person who kind of did a lot of swipes Kirby swipes had his own but he kind of went along with the muscles too right so you kind of have with the Kirby muscles how Kirby monsters would have this kind of line the sinew type of thing in them where Jack didn't really do that for the thing but you see it here like you see kind of style I think this is a painting of a Rick Buckler thing here's another Rick Buckler sort of image but you see now the the unibrow is kind of full form but it's kind of trying to remind you that it's an eyebrow so it kind of it kind of moves up and down right so you kind of see this classic thing that we normally see and you can see not oh, like thing isn't the only character that's going through this type of thing we have batman we have superman who over time the outfits kind of change as it goes along it doesn't always stay the same but you see here you got chest muscles right you almost see a knee here type of deal like the arm muscles Kirby kind of give him that but kind of the chest muscles here is a little much but you know it's a great image of him this is a great image right and Joe Senna is kind of keeping it all uniform but now this one is kind of odd one, right this is a Rick Buckler one this kind of changes we see his muscles it's kind of have a different build he has shorter legs and bigger sort of um upper body right but he's not a slab anymore you can see the you know, I think he always had kind of leg muscles this is kind of an odd sort of thing image but just to show you how the mul muscles started to develop right so we're going to see a drastic change once we get to George Perez, huh? R.I.P. George Perez. Now we see his version here. He's went right back to this man, this monster, right? With the thing in the rain, right? Thing doesn't have, is this a slab? Just, you know, flat, no chest muscles. Now, now um, we're gonna see some image where Perez does do that, but him, when he Brent does this, He's trying to get back to, he's just like Burn. He's trying to get back to this man, this monster, right? So we can see that in this image. Outside of the unibrow, which wasn't done the same way Cinder did, but it was done in the classic form, right? But you can see Perez is getting back to this man, this monster, which is way cool. You can see some of that, um, you know, he invoked that kind of toughness. And here's him stuck as the thing again and it's a great image you got the unibrow it's kind of not working like eyebrows but it's just like it's a classic 70s image of the thing all right and he's just doing i think it's breakdowns with joe Sinnott doing finishes right so as i showed you before this is where we got to this is how we got to 
this classic sort of image. You can see a couple others. We get to see the chest muscles, right? And this was, um, and this one is a little too. Here's a nose like so you got Kurt, you got Curtis doing it. You got chest muscles, unlike the image I showed you before. Um, arm muscles you can't get away from that. They, people always do that. And the unibrow, right? So this is in the in the face right here. This is a classic thing. Now, in my mind, as a kid looking at the cartoon in the earlier version, kind of the lack of a better term, the thing was to either say the thing is kind of lost an edge, right? He's kind of fun loving. He had moments of his temper, but he was kind of softer. And I think. I think when he was talking to, Jocena was talking to Byrne, he said, we kind of turned into Fozzie Bear, right? The Muppet Show was out, and um, at some point he felt like Jocena thought that, and Byrne heard it, and he was just like, totally agree, and it became something Byrne said, but he got it from Jocena. That's going to come up later, right? It's going to come up later, because they did issue 50, which was thing versus thing. And here's another attractive thing shot. I can't remember who did this art here, but I think I bought this and it's just like, you know, things got a girlfriend, you know, he's, you know, in great shape. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't sort of say a character that's going through struggles. He looked like anyone could would enjoy this. And here's Byrne doing it. at this point. I showed you Keith Pollard. He Keith Pollard got the Fantastic Four before Byrne did, and a couple of the titles like uh, Spider Man they both were up on this. But Byrne here, you can see Byrne doing it. And he's doing the classic. But this is layouts. But the thing has chest muscles. You almost can see some stomach muscles, like his ribs here, type of deal. But this is kind of what's always odd to me: the chest muscles. The unibrow is classic, so I can't really fault it. But I think it kind of softens the thing right we should be kind of more monstrous right so we're gonna keep going here's another image by burn right see the chest muscles it, it does it kind of still kind of evokes kind of a fun sort of character and here's Wilson Kevich right he took over and he really went for thing having regular muscles now this is monstrous right it's just a little odd having him have regular kind of muscles well, it's not regular kind of muscles but I think, this, I think Neil Adams, when he did his thing, it's kind of similar to this. So, but, um, so we're going to get to when Byrne, now this is the last thing. Now, Byrne, so Byrne was kind of trying to figure it out. Now, he was kind of doing the unibrow, but he was doing it in such a way that it wasn't like a kind of cartoony thing. He kind of kept it like kind of a part of his head. Right, so I've showed you what he looked like later, but this is when he first started getting on here. This is like 236, so that was one of the best images to kind of start with, right? So it's kind of um, jagged, kind of rough, and you can see a semblance of the unibrow, right? So, and then what else happens? So here, and at this point, as this, this I had to blow this image up, it's kind of like, uh, I hadn't figured out, I, I loved this as a kid, it was kind of cut out. You can see in these first couple of issues, this is 233, he's slowly kind of, he looks a little better than the other bird, uh, issue, but even though this is a kind of like, burn learning his way, it's like that kind of grim look on his face. And then you see here, this is like two issues later, he's really kind of, gain, you know, figuring it out. Again, really got a, a hold on the thing. So at this point, even though it's not a full-on unibrow, it's kind of like, hey, he's got it. He's figured this thing out, right? And the unibrow is much cooler as kind of a this jagged sort of thing that's not kind of a regular type brow. So I was like, this is, well, I don't think I've, I had the issue where you change back. And this is another from the first issue I should see. see He's kind of less in the unibrow, but it's there. It's kind of not the same, because you see it here, you see it here, right? But it's more kind of like what he would become later, right? You can see it in this, is this portion here, the unibrow, right? And you see a little of it here. I think this is inked by Terry Austin, 
right? But he's kind of changed it, so it's kind of part of his head, right? So Terry's thinking this. This is a great image of him. You know, I don't think that um, going back, let's go back. I think I liked Byrne doing it, but you can see once Byrne started figuring out it's kind of close to what Byrne, how Bernie did in Terry's Internet, right? And then he gets changed, right? So he gets changed. So Byrne is going back to thing that had the dinosaur hide or the oatmeal thing, right? And this is the breakout page for, like, this is, like, if, if I felt the thing needed an edge, he gained it back <laughs> in this issue. It's a two, 39, right? And this is an image where he's more monstrous, but he can get scared just like Kirby's thing, right? So, but it's, look at the shading. He added so much to this. And I don't think Sinnott and, and uh, who is it? Who's it? And um, Terry Austin, I don't think they could capture Byrne kind of evoking this, like kind of Steve Ditko kind of inking. Or maybe it's like Steve Ditko inking, uh, cartoony Neil Adams type of look, right? So, sorry, let's keep going. So this, we try to cure the thing, but at the same time, Alicia was there and he was worried about Alicia and that kind of affected him changing back. So he was kind of stuck in between he didn't lose any power, but he looked kind of like the way he did in the first. So Byrne kind of really had the, the Fantastic Four looking like the early version. And he also got this from, I think, um, I think Walter Simonson was doing Thor in the 70s where he, the, the destroyer had changed and he went back to the old design. And Perez tried to go back to the old design of the outfits and Byrne went one step further, not only the FF go back to the old outfits, the thing goes back to looking like the dinosaur hide thing, the oatmeal. And I think it was good for the period. I think Michael Golden did a version of this, and it's amazing. Like, it's really amazing. And, you know, we have him in this sort of in the outfit because the outfit's been out of space. And um, soon after, I think I have another image of this period. But see, even though he looks like a monster, he can still evoke some sort of humor in this thing. So keeping that sort of same sort of that. And then he changed back, right? In my two, two um, 45, Burn changes him back into the thing. And at this point, when he puts him back in the thing, Burn has a new lease on the thing, right? He's kind of, Remove the unibrow, so the his eyebrows are similar to the early thing, and I noticed that right away, and I was kind of happy that the unibrow was gone, even though it does look like one thing. I think it's more pronounced in the classic '70s version. He still has muscles, but he has uh, no sort of chest muscles here, and you know he doesn't kind of look like he's kind of cut out. And paste it onto the image. It kind of works a little better when Byrne does them this time. Now, with this said, Byrne, keep it in mind, I don't think he said this in print, but this is just my opinion. So Byrne is like, if the thing morphed into another form, I'm going to have the thing start to morph again, right? So we're going to start to see the thing lose these arm muscles, kind of go back to where he was before. I think if you change them back, so see, you still has some some arm muscles. This is just like I was just like, wow, like uh, I like the oatmeal, but I was just like, that's just as good. And you can see the profile; he still kind of kept the profile, but he's coming more of a slab, and he's losing his arm muscles, right? You can see he's slowly losing the arm muscles. There's no unibrow. The mushroom head kind of is back from the '60s. You still see a little. This is 255 or 254. Still has some muscles in here, but it's a lot less, right? And um, I think right after this part right here, we can still see 
kind of, you can see like a human type form here. And here, right here, look at this image. This is kind of him doing this man, this monster. I think I had an image where I put the two of these two together. This man, this monster, and that image is pretty close, right? So he kind of got to this man, this monster, which he wanted to do with um, with um, Joe Sinnott, but he got it on the way. And I'm going to roll back for a second because I didn't get to say this. I forgot to say this. Byrne did this. Joe Sinnott wrote and said, he's drawing it the same way he did when we first worked together. And that's wrong. The thing hasn't looked like this in years. Right now, I don't know if they put Joe up to, to complaining about it. Byrne did point out that um, that wasn't correct, that he only did the thing like this in, in Marvel 2 and 1 issue 50. But he said that when he worked with, with Sinat said he enjoyed doing it. So there's a little backlash from the pros, the people on the Marvel side, because it kind of felt like the classic version, like Byrne was kind of stepping on the classic version. And even though um, Sin, um, Shooter had put Byrne on the Fantastic Four, Byrne wanted to write it. Then later, both of them pushed for Byrne to draw it. And Terry Austin, inker, and Terry Austin was going to ink it. When Byrne kind of rolled back the clock on the outfits and the thing, Jim Shooter really wasn't happy. He couldn't really say that he wasn't happy because he just wanted the bulky type of thing. And I only know this because in John Romita's book, he talked about John Romita looking at the FF version of Burns FF and saying, why is he doing it like that? Like they haven't looked like this in, in years. And, and, he, and Shooter was like, yeah. And so I said, basically say, we should make him go back and do it the other way. And uh, John Romita was like, well, nah, let's not, you know, let's not make him do, you know, let's let him do what he wants to do. Like he kind of didn't want to push back. So as you see, you can see him going back to him slowly evolving. And I didn't realize this till later, right? So here we have them get to the classic dismantled muscle without muscles, no arm muscles. They're gone. Somehow they're gone. And see here, there's a little bit here, but kind of gone to the what Byrne would describe as a starfish, right? And here, to for Ron Wilson, he kind of gave a, 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 a idea how on the because they were doing the thing series together how to draw the thing. And this would be for a model that anyone can use, right? He did not attempt to apply basic rules of human anatomy to things. thing. He's not built like a human being. And this is something that Byrne had to realize in drawing him. Like he slowly kind of got to where he was early on. Keep the rocky plates rough and uneven. Do not go for uniformity of, of size or shape. Now, with that said, you can see there's a lot of little bit of dots that's the key that these are rough rocks now there was an image that um i think was it um, eric larson was playing god he wiped out all those dots and said i gave the thing a bath and no that's supposed to be texture right so anyway you can see the face and the profile right so we have the it kind of tells you how to do it you have kind of the mushroom head of people talk about the profile that Byrne had, had kept as much as best he could. But at the same time, even giving, um, who was it, giving um, Ron Wilson this model, he kind of kept the head, kept the chest being flat, and gave him arm muscles, right? The legs, you kind of, people always kind of get that kind of same. So it wasn't kind of stuck in doing that. So also note, he said here, the note, he no longer has a separate eyebrow, right? But letting you know that that's not in play. And I showed you some of the, if you look at the, remember the earliest shots, they kind of similar and it says the Fozzie thing, so not a teddy bear, right? So let's keep going. I don't know, I've got maybe three minutes of pictures, but not much far to go with this, right? So this, at some point, 
now Burn is this is Burn doing it, this new late this new version that he's morphed into. When I say morph, we're gonna find out once we get through these next set of images, right? So he had kind of we described it as a kind of a starfish, the kind of way the early one was where he didn't have arm muscles. He just was kind of this slab, and I've shown you some images as you've seen where you can kind of see that, right? And this issue, this is like an annual 17. I just love this version of the thing. I was just like, wow. Like he, and I, I had no insider knowledge of anything. And this is another classic. Image. So he burned trying to get to this man, this monster, and he got to it by putting the thing in the back of the cab, right? That's a mess, right? A New York cab, right? And um, it kind of captures that grim sort of look of the thing. And at the same time, we're going to get to see, I showed you some shots of the thing from the back that Kirby did. So we kind of got that here, where we get this version of the thing. And we get to see here some things of him, how he has morphed into this monster, right? But he still has, and here, it was a 263. We get this classic uh, thing of getting to see the thing move from other angles, right? And the last shot here, you know, the Hollywood type shot with the lighting, real powerful, and then him knocked out, right? And then we're going to get to see this kind of more monstrous version still lends itself to some humor, right? So, <laughs> right here, he can still lend himself to some humor. He goes in to meet with Burn because he's not upset with Burn's writing. Right? And how could he write a goody two shoes? He's with the assistant editor. And Byrne is um has taken artistic license with the thing's life. And the thing isn't happy with it. So he tells him how quickly he handled it. See kind of the mushroom head here. You see him sitting. And then we had the eyes here. Like as a kid, I was just like, wow, this is I like thing being kind of having some elements of where he was when he was early where he could lend himself to being you know a scary type of character right so this is where i figured out wait a second <laughs> um what happened to the thing now the thing they're the fantastic four in the secret wars so at the same time they don't know what happened to the heroes but the thing returns. Sasquatch can't really talk about it to these guys. The thing just pops up out in um, Canada, right? And we get to see the um, the classic thing. And I think I don't think Joe Simmet. So I was looking this. I was like, wait a second. The thing doesn't look like this anymore. And I was like, wait a second. And I didn't get that this was, uh, and he got the chest muscles. It's like, this is way after he's walked into something really cool. <laughs> it was like, Joe Senna just come in and ink this, All right? So we have Burn, Barry, uh, Burn Windsor Smith here, and we get Santa the. Classic, but even this, like he's kind of up the ante on him inking the thing, you know, with the thing like these character the thing we saw the early ones he was doing, the thing kind of looked cut out. Even this version of the thing with the unibrow kind of works now. With the reveal of who what this story is about, it kind of explains that this is kind of going back to. Um, the seventies kind of thing, right? So, which wasn't that long ago, but it's kind of suggesting. So, this give you uh, on the She Hulk when Byrne was doing it, kind of got to get back to where that character was because um, Paul Ryan did something close to where Byrne was doing it. He kept kind of the head the same way. Where I think um, Walter Simonson went for the single eyebrow. As Byrne described it. So 
This is like in the 90s, like 92, and he's got a real scraggy, uh, uh, you know, it's just like very monstrous type of deal, but it also says, gives some hints. So I just want to show you that in contrast to where Byrne was. And, uh, well, ultimately, I'll put this out is that he really, they should have really had him do like a special FF project during this period of close with the dual shade and the thing is just like, good Lord, he should have totally been doing some sort of FF project. But I just want to show you that sort of thing, how cool that looked. Let's just, uh, you know, just, and we're going to end it here on the, on the key polar um, armadillo thing, right? Because the, this is his final change for a while, and um, Walter Simonson would clear that up, but um, it was a, you can see how he's evolved over time. You see the headshot is the classic 70s thing, whereas I think Burns, um, one, was, the headshot he had there is a little different, but then he had the other thing. But anyway, so yeah, there we go. We got through it. Um, I don't know which one I should sit on. Well, no, I know what I should sit on. It's got to be Kirby's, right? So, right. So we've seen the thing evolve from so many versions of him, from you know the dinosaur hide to somewhere in between the dinosaur hide and the rocky version of it to this version here to slowly morph him after Kirby into where Senna was keeping him in line with muscles and chest muscles and then kind of burn trying to turn back the clock in two ways and giving us the um, oatmeal thing but having it similar to the thing from like issue 10 on that um, thing versus Hope from issue 12 and then kind of you know, having him back to this thing without the unibrow, but then slowly morphing him from 245 to 257, right? Like the FF annual. Well, you can see the thing just morph into his um, starfish type of look, which we kind of had in the in around issue 20 or so, but it wasn't as pronounced in the way he was doing it. So, yeah, we go. We just have a simple thing. Now, ultimately, when people draw the thing, um, post um, Keith Pollard, when he got cured, they just do the ones that they want to do, right? So when he was cured during the Engelhart run, um, when he turned back into the into this thing, he had the, the single eyebrow, and then um, he turned into the armadillo, then he had a single eyebrow again. Then when um, Paul Ryan took it over, he kind of added, uh, going, went to what Byrne was doing. And then I think after that, who was it? Jim Lee? Jim Lee kind of had the Rocky version that I showed you that, um, that uh, George Russo did. Like, I don't want to, I should do it part two. I had to do a part two on this, right? Because I want to give you that classic thing, but then kind of show you how it shifted over time. Because there's no real uniform in how people handle the thing after this. You know, you can see an evolution, how it happened. You can see from Rick Buckler, you know, from, from John Basima to Rick Buckler, you know, how it kind of morphed. But post this period, you don't really get to see that. Whereas Engelhardt did an issue where he turned into another thing that wasn't a progression, just more cosmic rays and another change, right? So there we go. That's my thing on the thing. And um, uh, I don't know. Uh, sorry for being away and hope to do a new video soon. Spinarak out.